Greetings to the Kingdom Citizen Podcast. I'm your host, Glenn Cruz. And uh, this week, we're just going to focus in on a... Actually, this is what I'm going to call the Kingdom Message Booster. It's a booster shot just to get you into the next episode. And today we're going to speak about our souls being crushed. And those of us who who follow our Lord and Savior, our King, Jesus Christ, he experienced this anguish of being crushed. This was a statement spoken by our King who has experienced distress in his life, but yet, but yet he did it without sin. And us in this world cannot say that. So we know that we are represented by a king who has sovereign authority over us, who's experienced the same thing we've experienced. And he chose to do things differently than we choose to because of our sinful nature. So we're going to talk about the statement when his soul was crushed. This was right before he was to go to the cross to die for our sins. Before us as sinners put him up for a sacrifice. And it says here. In verse 32, and this is in Matthew, all right, it says, they came to a place named Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, sit here until I've prayed. And he took took with him Peter, James, and John, and began to be very distressed and troubled. And he said to them, my soul is deeply grieved to the point of death. Remain here and keep watch. And he went a little beyond them and he fell to the ground and began to pray that if this were possible, the hour might pass from him. And he was saying, Abba, Father, all things are possible for you. Remove this cup from me, yet not what I will, but what you will. And he came and found them sleeping and said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not watch for one hour? Keep watching and praying that you may not come into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, he went away and prayed, saying these same words. Again, he came and found them sleeping. For their eyes were very heavy and they did not know what to answer him. And he came the third time and said to them, are you still sleeping and resting? It is enough. The hour has come. Behold, the son of man is being betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up. Let us be going. Behold, the one who betrays me is at hand. Betrayal and arrest. This is actually in Mark 14 and 32. And also in uh, Luke 22 and 44, it said that his anguish, he his anguish was so great that he sweat drops of blood. So we know that he was deeply troubled about doing this in his human flesh. This was a, 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 a moment of hopeless distress anguish frustration you know he's experiencing all these things right he's frustrated with the disciples because they're sleeping you know he he may be frustrated with why he's having to do this for people who who's not even caring about what he's here for a lot of people don't know uh, what he was doing and why he had to do this Right. But there's quite a few lessons in here that we can learn. Uh, There's four qualities that I've learned 
that this passion is that I believe that our king demonstrated for us to follow during our times of distress. And it's helped me out this past couple of weeks. Uh, actually, I just kind of reread this and, and the, the Holy Spirit laid this on me to for personal, you know, not satisfaction, but to know that I'm not alone and to know that, uh, you know, there's a purpose behind all this and I just have to stay resilient, have to stay strong and I have to remain in my purpose and finish the assignment. But the qualities, let's talk about these four qualities real quick. The first quality is you got to have quality relationships when you're going through distress. You know, so Jesus, he took Peter, James and John and he had maintained and invested into these human relationships. So that's why he took them. He didn't take all 12 disciples. So he, he took three that were close to him that he felt knew him. So he took them and uh, we have to take a few trustworthy believers with us when we're on an assignment like, you know, like I am, you know, this is a tough assignment. And, you know, it's been a lot where I've I've gone down this road by myself and it seems like it makes it easier because you don't have to talk to people because, you know, the enemy wants to get you by yourself, get you alone, not to talk that way when he whispers to you, you know, he can keep that anguish, that distress going. But, you know, people cannot read your mind on what you're dealing with. So you have to, you know, you have to talk to people. You have to bring people in. Like I said, trustworthy people that can speak into your life that you trust. And, you know, as long as they're speaking what you're, you know, that's matching what you're going through. And that, and that means something positive. It has to be the word for me. Um, if you're not going to speak the word to me. You know, I, it's, it's different now, you know, before I used to like to hear a good motivational speech, but I, I need word, the truth tackled behind it. You know, it, it's, it's great to hear people, you know, cheer you on, but they have to, you know, I need counsel at that point, counsel of the word and how I supposed to handle something or certain things. And that's what you should want as well when you're handling depression in times of distress. The second thing that I learned in this is we have to keep alert and pray. You know, you must petition the king yourself, you know, so when you go to a king, you know, you bow down in reverence to him. And he's a holy, sovereign king that, you know, when we go to him, we we give him our request and and he grants the request, you know, so we must stay alert to do that. But for the people that's coming with you, they have to stay alert themselves, too, you know, because Jesus said otherwise. Temptation will overpower you for the spirit is willing, but the body is weak. So three times Jesus went back and prayed. He did this three times. And it and the and the word says he prayed the same thing. Right. So I've learned that I'm not over burdening the father by going back to him and talking to him. And I did notice that the first time Jesus went, he went in distress and expressed his anguish. But it didn't say that the other two times. So that would tell me that. The prayer was different. You know, he didn't keep complaining about how he felt. But at that time, he's probably praying for what is your guidance for me to get out of this? What do I need to do? And in those times of prayer, you have to sit back and listen and wait for the voice of God, you know, to to hit you. And and I said it in a previous podcast. If you don't know the word. You're not going to hear the word. 
So you got to be in the scripture to know if it's God speaking to you or if it's the enemy, because he also knows scripture, too. And what he does is he changes one word in the sentence structure. Is it not so that if you eat this, you surely won't die. Right. It's true. Adam and Eve didn't die. But they died spiritually. Right. So there's little subtleties in there that you have to be aware of when you're in times of distress, because every voice is not the voice that you're supposed to be listening to. So, you know, I believe that developing a deeper relationship with God for encouragement to finish the assignment is what Jesus went back the other two times to to get from the father. Right. The third thing I learned is honesty. God, the father, along with the king, wants honesty about our feelings of the situation. So even though he knows our situation already, he wants our hearts to surrender its burden unto him. It's a place of girding yourself under humility. Now, when you read girding yourselves under humility or clothing yourself in humility, in the word that means back in the days of uh, slavery when Jesus was around girding yourself meant to tie around a certain garment around your waist to know that you were a servant and you were to serve people right so when it tells you to clothe yourself it's telling you of humility it's telling one person to hey you need to submit to whatever you're going through and you need to submit to others. You need to gird yourself with this garment, tie a knot around your waist so people will know that you are a slave and you are a servant unto something. Right. And that's what Jesus did during the Last Supper. He girded himself. He clothed himself in humility and wrapped the garment around himself and washed the disciples feet. So even in his time of distress, when he knew that he was going to have to hang on the cross, he was serving others. Right. So what I've learned in my time of distress is I have to continue to to serve those in my assignment as Jesus did. Right. So I'm I'm trying to follow this model. And I think that's what makes it more difficult as a human is because. My model is the king who is perfect. Right. And I don't do things as perfect as he does. And I know that. So at times it frustrates me when I'm not perfect. So I have to be careful because that frustration also leads to a signs of depression, because when you frustrate it, it takes you back to other parts of your depression where you start analyzing, reanalyzing. All the things that are going on instead of me analyzing all the things that God has done. And I know that he's been around. Right. I mean, week by week, I see the hand of God just whether it's, you know, like last week I had a co-worker call me on my my off my desk phone and said, hey, Glenn, what kind of food does your wife like or what can she eat? And I was like, well, I explained it to him, you know, nothing with high acidity, those kind of things, because of the the, the cancer has uh, given her, you know, um, um, acid reflux real bad. So indigestion and all that stuff. So I explained to him and uh, I got off the phone. I didn't even ask any questions. I was just like, man, I wonder what was that for? I was like, well, hey, maybe they were just asking. That's cool. The next day I saw him. He was like, Glenn. Don't forget to grab the bag downstairs. There's a bag for you, some food uh, for you and your family to, to eat on. And I was like, man, why did you do that? And he says, so you know that you're not alone. And I was like, wow, this is the king showing me favor. Right. And I learned today from a brother that, you know, we put favor 
addressed in things and we shouldn't do that you know favor of god on you is when you can gird yourself and 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 go through a trial and you're still pushing through that trial with the help of the lord he has his hand on your life because he's guiding you and man when i heard that today it brought me so much peace Right. And it's, it's, it's something that I still wrestle with, but it did bring me peace today as I heard that. And I think um, now we'll go through the last one that I learned out of this. And that's just trust, you know, trust. His will is better than yours. Trust that God's will is better than yours. Our will typically has a selfish agenda behind it and it's not for others. Right. And typically when we go through a trial, yeah, it burns the dross off of you. It puts you through the fire. It makes you come out, you know, pure as gold as well. But it is for it's, it's to shine his glory. You know, gold shines when all the impurities are out. It, it begins to shine. It sparkles, right? Just like a diamond, it sparkles and it's for others to comment on when others comment on what you've gone through then your job is to then give them the same god that helped you through and this is how we build the kingdom this is how we build kingdom citizens you know so i hope you guys en enjoyed this this quick message you know join me later this week on an episode that will continue to talk about mental health, okay, and and the journey, and the victories uh, through the will of our King Jesus that we can find in in the Word to help in every situation that you may be dealing with today. We're going to touch it, and we're going to have an example through God's Word to help you get through this. Right. Whatever you're going through, you know, because grief is in many forms. And when we let it. It's a seed. And if you cover it up with soil. It's going to grow and grow and grow. And you're going to have something living. That you don't know what's going on and what it is until you attack the soil of that seed that is trying to grow in your life today so may the grace of god be with you all and i'll see you later on this week blessings